Hi, I'm Chris with Adventures in DIY, and a bunch of us YouTube woodworkers got together to do this kitchen utensil build challenge. And what I decided to do was a napkin holder. It uh, gave me an opportunity to do some stuff that I haven't done before, such as the inlay work here and some through joints on the bottom. Let me show you how I built it. So what type of exotic wood am I using for this project? I got no idea. It broke off of a delivery truck whenever I was working in the warehouse a long time ago, and the driver gave it to me. The two perpendicular pieces are 5 inches by 4 inches, but really I should have made it 5 inches by 5 inches. The main body for this is 3 inches wide and 8 inches long. I started making the two pieces fit the main body by slowly adjusting the fence till they fit just right. From there it was a matter of just marking out the tenons and cutting them on the table saw. To help with chip out, scribe a line. That's something I should have done before I made those first couple cuts. I wanted a shallow cheek area for the tendons to sit in the mortises. After that was done, it was a matter of marking out the mortise areas, drilling them out, and finishing them with chisels. Don't make the same mistake I do with my first set. Make sure you chisel halfway through one side and then flip it over and work from the other side. To fix those funky looking mortises, I took Megan Fitzpatrick's suggestion and set up the mortise and tenons for wedges. The idea for all these bevels came from a video I saw on how Japanese woodworkers disguise the thickness of the wood by adding slight curves with their hand planes. All the bevels are cut at 7 degrees. The difference between them is the distance that the cut was made away from the blade. Since this project is about trying things I haven't done before, I decided to do an inlay with some curly maple I had. My wife likes cherry blossoms, so it was kind of a no-brainer for picking out the pattern. One of these days I'll get some nicer carving tools, but for this project I was using a $10 set that I had and a utility knife. Once the glue was set, the inlays were cut flush with a flush trim saw and scraped smooth. The wedges were cut from some more of that scrap maple. During the assembly, everything was checked to make sure that it was perpendicular. To make a slight taper, I used a utility knife and then hammered the wedges in place. After much deliberation with a combination square on how I was going to trim these feet, I ended up just grabbing the flush trim saw and following the bottom. Yeah, it surprised me too when they turned out flat. After a bit of sanding, I used two coats of semi-gloss polyurethane for the finish. If you take a look in the description below, you'll see links for all the other YouTube woodworkers that participated in the Kitchen Utensil Build Challenge. Um, as far as this thing goes, I really like the way the, the maple contrasts with this really dark, exotic wood that I have no idea what it is. So if you know what this thing is, put it in the comments below, please, because for all I know, this wood is toxic. Huh. I'd like to thank you for watching, and if you don't mind doing me a favor, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, while you're down there checking out everybody's links, um, I got links for social media down there. Most importantly, get out there and make something, and we'll see you next time. How come you are so cute? You're probably deadly. Oh, that wood's probably toxic. Hmm.